Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Next Week in Music History. We are talking about the week from May 19th through May 25th. Let's jump right in. Birthdays this week on May 19th, Pete Townsend, Grace Jones, Dusty Hill from ZZ Top, Joey Ramone, and Sam Smith. On May 20th, Joe Cocker, Cher, Jane Wheedlin, we, I'm sorry, Wheel, Wheelden. I thought it was Wheedlin. Go, goes. Israel is Kamaka Vivole. Kamaka Vivole. If I mispronounce that, let me know. Is the, uh, you know, the um, Over the Rainbow guy. Buster Rhymes, also on May 20th. May 21st, Fats Waller, Ronald Isley, Leo Sayer, and Notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. Christopher Wallace. May 22nd, Charles Aznavour, a uh, French crooner. Bernie Taupin, lyricist for um, Elton John, Morrissey, and Johnny Gill from New Edition. On May 23rd, Robert Moog, inventor, not, maybe not inventor, maybe he's the inventor. Robert Moog of um, Synthesizer fame. Tiki Fullwood from Parliament and Funkadelic. On May 24th, Bob Dylan, Patti LaBelle, Roseanne Cash, Heavy D, and Rich Robinson, Black Crows. And on May 25th, Tom T. Hall, Klaus Mine, I think I pronounced that one right, from Scorpions, Klaus Mine, and Lauren Hill. So those are the birthdays for this week. History. What happened this week in history, music history? On May 19th, 1988, James Brown was arrested for the fifth time in 12 months. And um, it was for uh, little things like our assault, resisting arrest, illegal weapons. Nothing for James. May 19th, 1978, Dire Straits released Sultans of, Sultans of Swing. It's their first major label single. It's recorded on a budget of 120 pounds at the time, 1978. 1976, Keith Richards crashed his car after falling asleep at the wheel. And I have a feeling that this series is going to uh, just every week we're going to have some example of Keith Richards hurting himself. <laughs> hurting himself. May 20th. In 2021, Roger Hawkins died. Roger was part of the Muscle, Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. And he played um, on tons of hits. Uh, when a Man Loves a Woman, uh, Mustang Sally, Respect. Lots and lots of hits played by Roger Hawkins. Died on uh, May 20th, 2021. 2013, Ray Manzarek from The Doors died. 2012, Robin Gibb of The Bee Gees also died. May 20th, 20, 2003, James Brown was pardoned for all of his past crimes in South Carolina. I don't know how he pulled that off, but um, pardoned in South Carolina. 1998 was the funeral for Frank Sinatra, May 20th, 1998. 1978, Paul McCartney went to number one with, with a Little Luck. In 1966, Bob Dylan played a gig in Scotland. And some members of the audience were so unhappy that Dylan had switched from acoustic music to electric music that they tried to disrupt the concert by playing their own harmonicas. That's true. Tried to overpower the band with their own uh, with their own uh, harmonicas. May twenty first, twenty nineteen. Scottish music musician Jake Black died. And how do you know Jake Black? Jake was a member of the Alabama Three. How do you know the Alabama... Alabama? How do you... Start over. Start that one over. How do you know Jake, Jake Black? He was a member of the Alabama Three. How do you know the Alabama Three? Well, they are responsible for a song called Woke Up This Morning, 
which was the theme song to The Sopranos. I'm sure you know that song. May 21st, 1971, Marvin Gaye released the album What's Going On, widely regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time. 19... I think I wrote down 1975. That can't be right. Hmm. Well... Let's go 55 on this one. Chuck Berry recorded Maybelline, probably 1955, right? Which is considered one of the very first rock and roll songs. I need to write better. May 21st, 1971, Rolling Stones released Sticky Fingers. Uh, it started a four-week run at number one. May 23rd, 2000, Noel Gallagher walked out on an Oasis gig, just walked out during their European tour. Also in 2000, Eminem released the Marshall Mathers LP, one of his big hits. 1992, attorneys for Freddie Mercury announced that Mercury had left a majority of his estate to his longtime friend, Mary Austin. May 23, 1991, photography for Nirvana's big breakthrough, Nevermind. Uh, the cover photo took place in L.A. 1991 on May 23rd. 1973, Jefferson Airplane were prevented from performing a free concert in Golden Gate Park because there was a ban on electric instruments in the park. Later on, the, the band made everyone in the world pay dearly by writing and releasing the song, We Built This City. Uh, that was in response to that, uh, that concert being banned. So we've all paid for that. In 1964, Ella Fitzgerald became the very first artist to have a hit with a Beatles cover song. She's covering the Beatles in 1964. She covered Can't Buy Me Love, and that entered the UK charts in uh, 1964 on May uh, 23rd. May 24th, 2023, Tina Turner died, age 83. May 24th, 2010, Paul Gray, bassist with Slipknot, also known as number two, he died at age 38. 1997, Hanson started a three-week run at number one with their song Mbop, which is another song that we have all paid dearly for. In 1980, Genesis fans were surprised to, uh, to find that when they lined up for tickets for the band's show at the Roxy Club in L.A., they found Phil, Tony, and Mike manning the ticket booth in 1980. And finally, on May 25th, 2004, Madonna canceled three shows in Israel due to terrorists threatening to kill her because she symbolized the West. Not getting political. This is a bad time to talk about Israel, but it's on my card, so I have to say it. May 25th, 1965. The Who and Led Zeppelin appeared together at Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland. It is the only time they did a show together, and Zeppelin opened that one, as far as I know. Fans of Zeppelin and The Who, if you have known uh, another incident where they played together, let me know. But as far as I know, that is the only time that they uh, they performed together on the same bill. And in 1965, May 25th, 1965, Sonny Boy Williamson died in his sleep. He was a blues musician. musician. He was a harmonica player, and he once set fire to a hotel room by attempting to cook a rabbit in a coffee percolator. Now, I'm not a blues musician. I wouldn't know the first step to take in cooking a rabbit, a rabbit in a coffee percolator. I mean, I assume the first step is get a rabbit I'm not even sure how I would do that. But once you've got the rabbit, you've killed it, how do you cook it in a coffee percolator? I, I don't know. But he set the hotel room on fire. Apparently that's what he did after gigs. He would, he would eat a rabbit, and the only thing he had in the room at the time to cook it with was a coffee percolator, and I didn't even think you could cook anything on that. It barely makes the coffee hot. I, I don't know. Anyway... 1965, Sonny Boy Williamson. And that is it for another edition 
episode two this was, of Next Week in Music History. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I drop these every week. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great week. Next Week in Music History is brought to you by Vinyly. Classic curated Vinyly. Tune in next week to hear John say... How do you know the Alabama... Alabama...